Hello everybody. Today I will start another new module uh, that is male processes fusion oiling bros. So uh, last module we have discussed the male processes but that was casting but in this cases we will try to discuss about the uh, fusion oiling processes. So uh, this module we have uh, several subtopics uh, we have I have decided uh, this area we will try to focus on. First is the different arc oiling processes we will try to discuss. Next. Uh, oiling and joining of polymer and ceramics. So, uh, we will be discussing. Uh, next, we will try to discuss the laser and electron beam oiling process because I put it in separate category because uh, laser and electron beam is basically high energy beam oiling process which is important in the uh, from the practical aspects. So, that is why I kept it in separately. Then, we will try to discuss the advanced oiling processes that means using the conventional sources also the say for example, using laser, using electron or using normal arc oiling processes but what way we can take the um, advancement of the conventional oiling process that we'll try to discuss in the advanced oiling processes then little bit about oiling solidification although we have discussed in the uh, introduction uh, this module the details about the different solidification processes or theory of the solidification but in this case we'll try to discuss only on the uh, oiling processes and uh, here uh, we will not uh, discuss about the theory and all this thing we just simply uh, try to look into different application of the solidification theory in the perspective of the fusion oiling processes then to some extent we will try to discuss in the wire based additive manufacturing of the metallic materials because it is i put it under uh, fusion oiling process because wire additive manufacturing is we can say that it is a some extended version of the the oiling process so that's why i put it uh, in, in this particular module and finally we'll try to discuss one taking one or two case studies and we'll discuss in the what we learn from this particular course so this is the overview of this module now we'll start with this thing uh, this arc oiling processes now we have the classification of the arc oiling process or classification of the oiling process we have already discussed we cover up this thing but here only the focus on the arc oiling process. So we know there are so many types of the arc oiling processes I will try to discuss the few, few selectives associated arc which is most widely used one is the sealed metal arc oiling process and this is in short it is called the SMAW then we will discuss gas tungsten arc oiling process which is known as GTAW process, gas metal arc oiling process GMAW, then plasma arc oiling process PAW, submerged arc oiling process SAW and then flux core arc oiling FCAW and finally try to discuss electro slag uh, oiling process ESW. So these are the different variants of the arc oiling processes uh, and of course their application area are different and to handle the different types of the material that is also different. So based on perspective we will discuss all this arc oiling processes. Now, if you see the understand the what is electric arc oiling process, it is uh, simply uh, passing of the this, uh, this current and this uh, when you try to make a electrical circuit and of course one particular we put the terminal one terminal is connected to the electrode and another terminal connected to the workpiece and we can use either consumable or non-consumable electrode to melt uh, the uh, electrode as well as the substrate material. And then uh, these two materials can be joined uh, when the int before uh, into the mixing of the liquid metal and once solidify then two components can be joined together. So this is the basics of the uh, uh, oiling process or I can say the electric arc oiling process. So he, from this figure you can see there is a connection you can use either AC supply or DC current both can be utilized uh, depending upon the application area the oiling can be arc oiling can be performed. Now you see the arc oiling utilize uh, in the basics the one kind of the heat and this heat is produced by creating the arc between the electrode and the workpiece and of course therefore this is has to be arc has to be created here and that is the source of the uh, heat in this particular case arc oiling process. Now temperature in this case the temperature can be by an arc it can range from 6000 degree centigrade to 7000 degree centigrade which is huge temperature and at this particular temperature is basically uh, this the metal can be vaporized but in, in practical this uh, when this arc heat is utilized uh, to melt the material so when the arc heat is transferred to the substrate material at that point so there may be loss of the heat by convection and radiation so the 
it is the the although the arc temperature can go up to 6000 to 7000 degree centigrade but it can melt the substrate material which is just uh, maybe uh, 200 or 300 degree centigrade more than that of the melting point temperature of the metal now once it is done the joint produced by arc welding which is very strong compared to the other oiling processes for example the high temperature used in the process because we can use the very high temperature in this particular process so we can expect the joint strength is relatively better as compared to the other oiling processes but using arc welding process there are two different types of the oiling process one one case is we can utilize the consumable electrode another case is we can use the non-consumable electrode so some coated electrode we usually use and that coating is basically provides some kind of the shielding to the arc during the performance of the oiling process so these basic things we have uh, uh, we we have some understanding on this uh, the the pur purpose of different everything but here i am trying to um, give you some overview of the different arc welding processes now certain cases we can use the consumable electrode consumable electrode means that can act as a filler material and when you making some groove that groove has to fill uh, using this filler material so that's we can consume the electrode and the when the groove is uh, filled by the filler material then at the same time it smells the substrate material also your workpiece so when it is mixed together and then it try to uh, uh, make after solidification it can create some kind of the uh, strong joint process now fluxes are used some to remove the impurities from the slag formation so we can use the uh, the in the some flux uh, just to protect the this it helps to protect the this uh, molten pool from the outside atmosphere this is the basics uh, of the arc welding process now if you look into this flux coated electrode so when the electrode is coated using the flux so it is having the different aspect we need to consider one is the uh, this type of the coating uh, we can utilize it can be light coated it can be medium coated it can be heavy coated electrodes so depending upon the applications we can use it and coating and the electrode material can be non ferrous electrode material can be cast iron electrode material can be alloy steel and mild steel electrodes depending upon the applications area but uh, in this case the there is another factor that is the coating factor because what can be the thickness of the coating so uh, on the, on the electrode that can be decided by the ratio of the electrode diameter to the core wire diameter so actually metallic wire diameter that ratio indicates the coating factor so if you see the for the light coated electrode the coating factor is around 1.22 approximately medium coated electrode the coating factor is around 1.44 and heavy coated electrode it can be around 1.62 or 2.2 so these are the different coating factor you can use depending on the application but types of material used in the uh, in the flux coated electrode we see the type of material ferrosilicon ferromanganese and uh, that type of the uh, flux uh, we can use uh, material used in the flux coated electrode and that is helps to deoxidation of the molten uh, pool so that helps to deoxidation so but magnesium silicate potassium silicate and calcium carbonate they actually used that helps to stabilize the arc during the process even we can use the aluminum silicate sodium silicate and manganese uh, magnesium silicate that actually produce the formation of the slag easily converted to the this this oxide and all these things can easily converted to the slag so that it is easy to remove after the solidification sometimes we use the wooden uh, soda cellulose calcium carbonate they, this can be used and that is basically for covering the arc and sometimes we can use the iron fillings uh, for obtaining a fine arc and uniform bed can produce all these things so we see that the type of the these types of the materials used uh, in the flux coated electrode and each are uh, different types of the materials having some some role uh, for the complete oiling process so here i have tried to explain the what are the different role of the different types of the this uh, materials used in the flux coated electrode now not uh, sometimes when you use the uh, non consumable electrode or maybe even we can use the consumable electrode so in that particular case uh, that it is necessary to protect the the oil pool by using the shielding gas by supply of the shielding gas in that case we no need to use some kind of the uh, flux in, in in this particular case so the shielding gas is basically cover the arc electrode tip and the oil pool from the external atmosphere and of course the shielding gas uh, join chemically reactive to oxygen the metal we know the metals are more prone to form some kind of the uh, the chemically react with the uh, outside uh, atmosphere and they mainly react with the oxygen 
uh, hydrogen and, and, and uh, nitrogen and then so that does not help to make the this uh, very good oil join. So, therefore, to avoid uh, this reaction chemical reaction um, by the mol uh, molten metal in that cases we can use the sealing gas. So, it can be the, the sealing gas used, but sealing gas directly use the inner type of sealing gas can be utilized or flux can be used or we can use together also. So, that actually protect the molten pool from uh, outside atmosphere. So, common sealing gas we example is the argon and helium because this is the inner type of gas and that becomes non-reactive even at the very high temperature. So, that is why you can use the preferred choice is the some kind of the inert gas as a sealing gas. Now, flux can also be used, flux can be will use the protect oil zone uh, formation of the oxides uh, from the formation of the oxides and some kind of the unwanted contaminants uh, we can use the uh, flux material. And at the same time flux can form some kind of the slag and then uh, this uh, facilitate uh, this uh, removal of the slag after end of the welding process. So, therefore, during welding the flux melts and uh, it covers the oil zone protection and of course, after finishing uh, we can when it is converted to the slag we just remove it some using the, some kind of the brassing we can utilize and that we can remove it. But of course, additional function of the flux is that other than giving the protection they stabilize the arc. So, that is also secondary role for the this flux and of course, you, is uh, it uh, helps to uh, helps to, to avoid the formation of the spattering during the oiling process. So, that is the secondary advantage of using the, the or secondary role of the uh, flux in a oiling process. Now, this will all uh, this uh, heat generation is one important. So, because uh, we can understand that what way we can explain the, the utilization of the different polarity associated with the welding process. So, although we have already mentioned we can utilize the DC current, but into the DC current what kind of the polarity can be utilized. So, it means that the which part which terminal will be connected to the workpiece and what kind of uh, terminal will be connected to the, the electrode. So, in DC welding we see that this is called DCRP or DCEP electrode positive. So, electrode can be positive terminal and this thing workpiece can be the negative terminal. So, in these cases maximum heat generation will be on the, the workpiece material and less amount of the heat will be generated on the electrode because workpiece is the positive terminal. So, electron will flow from uh, towards the attracted towards the positive terminal and we release this kinetic energy on the substrate material. So, that is why maximum amount of the heat generation on the DC current electrode positive polarity. So, reverse thing happens in case of the, the DCEN. So, electrode negative also in this cases the the uh, uh, maximum heat generation will also happen in the electrode material and minimum heat generation on the workpiece material. So, therefore, that is why the second one it since maximum heat generation on the um, this electrode when the maximum heat generation will be on the uh, electrode material. So, in that case this we, we try to utilize the consumable uh, consumable electrode in the in this particular polarity, but when maximum heat generation will, will be on the workpiece in that cases we will try to utilize the, the non consumable electrode because we here the we are intend to use the maximum heat on the workpiece, but we are do not intend to consume the electrode. So, that is why we choose the polarity electrode electrode uh, uh, workpiece uh, positive and electrode negative that kind of the polarity and that is associated with the, the non consumable electrode, but other way when you try to use the consumable electrode you try to melt uh, the intention is to melt more on the electrode or electrode material. So, that is why in that case we can utilize the electrode uh, uh, this uh, electrode as a positive terminal and workpiece as a yes electrode as a positive terminal and workpiece as a negative terminal. So, this way we can choose depending upon the applications uh, what kind of the polarity can be utilized in case of the arc welding process. Now, there is IC welding AC current also can be used. So, AC uh, or you can say the AC welding process in this case the polarity continuously changes uh, in the uh, not uh, cannot be utilized as the power source changes uh, poles frequency in this case. So, here we cannot uh, the, because every half cycle there is change of the uh, uh, polarity the from positive to the negative in case of the AC. So, if you look into analyze the this three different DC SP uh, state polarity, DC uh, reverse polarity and AC current, AC welding process we see we can compare that heat distribution in case of the state polarity the maximum heat on the workpiece and minimum on the electrode. Similarly, DC RP reverse polarity with 33 percent heat on the workpiece and 66 percent on the electrode. But if you use the AC current, so it is equally both the workpiece and electrode the 50 percent uh, heat generation are there. 
if you compare the bead penetration so definitely when workpiece uh, at the workpiece the heat generous will be much more so we can expect the penetration will be much more in this particular case but dc rp the penetration will be the shallow penetration we can expect but ac current alternative current is equal equal effect uh, for the electron and workpiece so in that cases we can get the moderate penetration of the oil bead bead width in the other way the when the deep penetration will be there bead will, will be narrower but in cases the uh, dc reverse polarity bead width will be the wide and ac current it can say this is a moderate heat affected zone uh, dc uh, state polarity is the wide heat affected zone because maximum heat can be generated on the workpiece so but the reverse polarity will be narrow heat affected zone and ac current it will be the moderate but uh, fusion that means uh, effect of the fusion will be more uh, in case of the state polarity so that means more melting will be there on the workpiece side less melting will be there on the workpiece side and ac current uh, using ac current moderate melting will be there but oxide cleaning is the more in this cases uh, no cathodic cleaning is there associated with the state polarity in this cases but the in this case the strong cathodic cleaning is there associated with the reverse polarity but in case of the um, ac current this is a half cycle cleaning we can uh, we can we can observe uh, during the the different polarity of the of the current in in arc cooling process now if we look into the gas tungsten arc cooling process here we see that tungsten inert gas welding process uh, which is known as the gtw process uh, tungsten inert gas welding tig or gas tungsten arc cooling process which is called uh, gtw process in the we use the non consumable electrode so tungsten uh, we use the tungsten as a non consumable electrode because it can retain its hardness at very high temperature that is the that's why we use the tungsten electrode material uh, in gtw process and inert gas is utilized if you see the inert gas is to non consumable electrode the, from the figure you can see and there is a shielding gas is the inert gas usually used for the as a shielding gas to protect the argon and helium is usually used or their mixture can be utilized to protect the uh, molten pool both ac power source and dc power source can be utilized but uh, the in this case is while dc power supply is there we can use the state polarity so state polarity means electrode uh, uh, negative and workpiece positive so if you see the uh, workpiece positive and electrode negative we can use this kind of the polarity then electron flow will be more towards the workpiece so that's why maximum heat will be generated because in this case we use the non consumable electrode now if we look into the uh, advantage we say the relatively high quality of the oil structure because we are not mixing with the any third material or any we are user uh, by consuming the electrode so that's why it is the structure quality is relatively better and uh, no slag formation is there because we are not using any flux only the shielding gas is utilized just to uh, shield the uh, molten pool in this case thermal distortion of the workpiece are minimal due to the concentration of the heat in a, in a very small area so thermal distortion is actually uh, very minimum in this uh, in this particular process so gtw is utilized is basically very uh, thin sheet structure we can utilize the gtw because in this case uh, we use the non consumable electrode now if you look into gas metal arc cooling process which is also known as the me welding process metal inert gas welding process in this case we use the consumable electrode consumable electrode uh, in the form of a wire uh, we can utilize and there is a continuous supply of the wire to maintain the arc gap or to maintain the arc during this uh, welding process so here since maximum we consume the electrode and we try to utilize the MIG, oiling, uh, MIG or GMAW process over a large structure because usually we use the making the groove and all this groove is filled by the consumable electrode. So that's why this consumable electrode or filler wire which is known as the electrode also. So here DC sub power supply is used uh, with the uh, reverse polarity and which ensure the stable arc and the smooth metal transfer and during this process and that actually finally re reach to the very good quality of the weld so therefore we see the gtw and gmw process so here gtw process we use the non consumable electrode but gmw process we can use the consumable electrode now any alloying elements uh, in the wire may be used and the shielding inert gas may be uh, may be used the argon helium nitrogen carbon dioxide or, or combination of these gases uh, is used and depending upon the application so sometimes you can use the co2 alone is used as a shielding gas so in that cases it is known as the co2 uh, oiling process but of course here you can use the wire but there is a very thin coating on the wire is there in the 
uh, GMRW process, but that thin coating is not may not sufficient uh, to uh, use the some protective atmosphere during the oiling process. So that is why in this particular process we can use the extra sealing gas to protect the, the molten pool from the outside atmosphere. Next who is the plasma arc welding process. So plasma arc welding process also similar to the gas tungsten arc welding process but here we use the uh, one uh, non consumable electrode and and this electric arc is created between the electrode uh, and the workpiece but there is additional plasma gas we can utilize here. So that plasma gas actually create uh, the plasma formation and that uh, helps to the create the high heat generation or the it becomes a part of the, the welding arc. So see from this figure we use the there is a plasma gas uh, supply is there as well as the sealing gas supply also there and with the non-consumable tungsten electrode and we can use this tungsten electrode non-consumable tungsten uh, the, this thing tungsten electrode but that uh, nozzle actually constricted the water cool nozzle we can utilize and that helps to constrict the arc in this particular process. So here the difference is that we can create very constricted arc as compared to the GTW process because GTW process is the circuit is, uh, is produced between the electrode and the workpiece but there is no no kind of the nozzle which is can constrict the arc see it's a, i can say it's a great kind of the open arc but in this case the by adjusting the this water nozzle the which is inside through is the plasma gas is flowed so that can be used just to create the constricted arc in the plasma arc cooling process the electrode is positioned within the body in the torch so plasma arc is separated from the sealing gas envelope here we can see there that the plasma arc is basically separated from the the sealing gas envelope here and plasma is forced through the the copper nozzle which constrict the arc already discussed and the plasma exists at the very high velocity approaching the speed of the sound temperature can go to up to plasma temperature 28000 degree centigrade or higher but when it is interacting with the workpiece there might be loss of the heat from the the arc uh, but such that the maximum temperature of the workpiece can go up to this uh, uh, approximately 2300 degree or 2500 degree centigrade of in case of the steel but of course it uh, maximum temperature can, can go beyond that when we try to make the plasma uh, arc welding process in the keyhole mode uh, welding process. So, in that cases or that I mean to say that that uh, like laser welding process the plasma can be created in the form of a keyhole mode welding process. Now here we can use the argon, helium and hydrogen or mixture of this can be used as a in the sealing gas in case of the plasma uh, arc welding process. But of course the we can use the um, this uh, argon also both as a plasma gas as well as the sealing gas. So, plasma and sealing gas can be the same also uh, in that cases but their supply should be the from the different channel it must be there so that we see the plasma gas is flowing in the one channel or through one nozzle passing out and sealing gas is also passing through the uh, another channel or another nozzle. So in that sense advantage is that good tolerance of the arc can be any kind of the uh, to misalignment if there is a misalignment it can this plasma can be accommodated plasma arc welding process that is the this kind of the advantage is there high welding rate is possible and keyhole effect can be produced using the uh, plasma gas source. Now we see the modes of the plasma arc welding process there are two different modes we see the one is the transfer arc another is the non transfer arc. So it is nothing but this thing when transfer arc we can follow the regular process. So here we can create the arc between the electron and the workpiece and that is called the transfer arc. So here plasma arc transfer from the electron to the workpiece and it is basically melting or heating on the uh, workpiece. So that is the called the transfer arc but there is another mode that is called the non transfer arc. So here non transfer arc the in this case the arc creates between the electrode and the between the um, cathode that means the this uh, the nozzle and the this uh, the uh, uh, non consumable electrode. So between these two if we create the arc so making the electrical circuit complete and we can bypass the workpiece here. So in these cases we can say this is the non transfer arc. So arc occurs between the electrode and the nozzle. So that is the uh, uh, features associated with the non transfer arc. So high temperature is carried out. Uh, to the workpiece by the plasma gas also and it is also similar to an oxy fuel welding process and it is used for mainly the coating it means that the arc is created between this source with this arc it can be used as, a, as an as an external uh, component which is not exactly part of the electrical circuit to the system plasma arc welding system so that is why we can say that it is a similar kind of the oxy fuel torch 
what we can heat the substrate or we can melt the substrate the similar way we can use in case of the non transfer arc based plasma arc welding process but of course this is more usable in case of the uh, coating process but not for the uh, oiling purpose similarly there is another process that is called the submerged arc welding process so here submerged arc welding process the joining process that involves the formation of the electric arc between continuously fitting electrode and the workpiece to be welded of course it's similar the principle is similar to the gas meter arc welding process but in this particular case we use the flux blanket and that is cover up uh, this complete arc uh, during this process so here the wire electrode wire is basically supplied through the roller and we can create the blanket of the using the uh, this the, the flux powder flux we can use it and we can cover up uh, this complete uh, system and in th that's why it in this case uh, basically it is very difficult to observe the behavior or movement of the arc because it is covered up with the uh, flux so this flux blanket use i think is protect the the from the um, this arc from the outside atmosphere and of course in this case therefore no additional shielding gas is required and there is another point is that since it is a this arc is protected by this uh, the flux blanket so uh, the efficiency of the arc the thermal efficiency in this particular process is actually very high as compared to the other process in this case so but this process is basically applicable for a very thick structure so for example thick plate joining of the low carbon low alloy steel and which is we can find out the application of the ship building industry pressure vessel bridge and structural members can be welded by using the submerged arc welding process so it's mainly applicable for the very high uh, uh, thickness of the material in that case or heavy structure we can we want to join or want to weld in that case the submerged arc welding is the more suitable but C is that is a flat horizontal welding position in the butt and fillet joints and is not recommended for the overhead welding process because danger of the fall of the molten metal in the large quantity. So that is why this is mainly applicable for the, the suitable for the flat horizontal welding position this particular uh, submerged arc welding process. So here I have tried to discuss although there are so many welding processes but here I have tried to cover up very basic types of the uh, fusion welding processes uh, in this case to just to understand the the different this uh, mechanism their principle of the welding process fusion arc welding processes so i think uh, that will help you to understand the the distinguish of the different uh, arc welding processes so thank you very much for your kind attention